Might as well do this again. Okay. Here we go. Brrr. Hello and welcome to a Not Chilly Game Review. And on today's agenda, we're going to be reviewing Alice Madness Returns, which came out on PC, uh, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 in 2011. Now, Alice Madness Return is obviously a sequel to American McGee's Alice, which came out in 2000, uh, which I also have somewhere in my ridiculous stack of video games, or I've definitely played it in the past, and loved it. But I might do a separate review on that, so let's just pretend like that didn't happen so I've got more content to make. Alice Madness Returns is set many years after the first Alice game, where now Alice is... I guess being diagnosed as insane, and she already was insane in the first game, uh, but now she's in an orphanage, and now she's seeing a therapist and whatnot, and they're using certain techniques to help her forget her past, which uh, for them is the only way that they treat their patients. And so we get sucked back into the world of Wonderland, uh, and we're in the same similar kind of adventure, but I'm going to leave the rest of the story to uh, you guys to play. Because it actually does have a lot of really nice twists and turns. Not necessarily major twists in the plot, but just a shadowy, kind of looming over. Um, and that, I feel like, doesn't need to be spoiled in this video. So I'm going to go straight into gameplay. Now, it is just the same as the other Alice game, if you've played the other Alice game before. Uh, I guess it's just prettier, really. They've really made it a fluid experience. I remember playing the first Alice game and having a bit of struggle to, I don't know, just, like, it was pretty seamless, but it sometimes it was a bit choppy and whatnot. But this game kind of feels very much like a, a lot more kind of intensified or focused action. Um, and some of the, the battles can be quite intense, quite difficult, uh, especially if you haven't quite figured out the countering system or if you do what I did like like an idiot and go back um, and don't play it for six months and then try to play it again because then there's all these little little tricks all little all the enemies have certain ways that you can defeat them and without the knowledge to play it you can really suck at the game but going back to its prettiness uh, I played this on quite a crappy machine to begin with that that was this is the six months prior that I'm talking about and now I've played it on quite a nice machine and I got to bring up all the resolution and the smoothness of the like the 60 frame rates or whatever, the seamless smoothness gameplay came out. And um, and it was gorgeous. It was a really pretty game, especially if you try to turn on the physics. If you've got a like a physics card or whatnot and you try to actually take advantage of that, then it looks amazing. But essentially what you're playing is a 3D platformer game uh, with a lot of fighting moments, which I guess platformer games still have. And the puzzles are all the same. They're, they're relatively straightforward. I would say that this game is a little bit more streamlined, but not by much. I never expected a very strong amount of difficulty from the Alice games. But what I did expect is a very beautiful art style, which they have not let me down for. And this art style is blended in with the gameplay. It's not just a pretty background. It's also how that background interacts with what you play. And I felt like that that was really well portrayed in this version of the game. But there are also two worlds. You have the real world and you have Wonderland. Now, funny enough, I feel a lot safer in Wonderland than in the real world. They've done a really caricature version of this, the real world. And this real world is dark, dirty, and horrible. And Wonderland almost seems pleasant. It almost makes sense as you would expect that Alice would be going to Wonderland because it was her safety zone. But as Wonderland is corrupted, there's still a lot of little nooks and crannies which have to be uncovered and discovered. Uh, and it's like anyone's mind, I believe. Hopefully, not everyone's mind, I guess. But in the sense that there is that paradise that exists there, but if it is corrupted, you need to do things to help combat and help resolve the issues that are in your own brain. Now, I played this game with uh, the PC controls first, and I found it to be a little bit clunky is probably the way to put it. This is a game for a controller. And I'm going to say that really strongly here. Get an Xbox controller or a PS3 controller and find a way to hook it up to your computer and play it. This is if you're playing it on PC. And play it with the controller because it makes it a much more seamless game. Whilst with the, the keyboard it was just I felt like I was stretching my fingers trying to figure out exactly how things go. And especially when going back to it in the later on in the time like after waiting six months. Now I guess what really drew me to the first game was 
the twistedness of the video game. It was very twisted and it held no punches back. It seemed to have just take this idea of insanity and it really pushed to the screen. Some of the visuals were quite disturbing in the first game. Um, I remember it being quite haunting. Uh, I remember playing it recently even, and it, just starting to play it recently. And it was a very haunting experience. Um, but this game kind of... I wouldn't call it as haunting. Uh, I guess it's more mainstream. It's a little bit more ch children friendly. Mind you, it is still quite a twisted game. Now, musically, it has achieved exactly what it was supposed to achieve. The music is great. I've never thought of an instance of it being annoying or having to turn it off. It didn't exactly pop for me either, though. But in the same vein, I don't believe that all music should. Uh, it served its purpose. It was quite nice. Same thing goes with the special effects, the sound special effects. They were quite punchy, and, and it was all in the correct place. I never felt disoriented by the audio, which is a really nice experience. I guess to sum up, if you really want to get this game or not, is do you like the core concept of Alice? Uh, talking about Alice, the original book, I haven't read the book, but I've obviously seen the original movie. That twisted, weird, dark comedy slash horrible slash interesting slash engaging. Uh, do you enjoy that plot line? Do you enjoy that experience? Because gameplay wise, you're not really going to be pushed too hard. The gameplay experience is pretty straightforward with your double jumps and with your jumping onto platforms and with the clicking of the fighting experience. It's not necessarily what you're playing the game for. You're playing it for this immersive, weird experience. And if you're really into that, I would highly recommend this game. On PC, with a controller. Now, I haven't played it on console, so I'm not going to exactly disown the consoles, but I feel like it's very much a beautiful PC experience. So that's all for me today. So feel free to drop down a comment or something down below. Uh, if you like it, like it. That'd be awesome. And hopefully I can start getting back into this uh, video thing. Bye. Anyway, thank you.